Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm very excited to be at the first great day of uh, Varsov. And thank you again for all the sponsors. And of course, I have to say, especially to my, the company I work for, Kenu, is one of the sponsors. That's why we're here. Uh, so as Tomek has said, well, my name is Andres Almeray. That's me and my wife spending some beautiful time in uh, Montreux, Switzerland, on summer, because right now oh, it's cold winter. I'm from Mexico, so I really like the warm weather. And uh, uh, so I work for this company called Canoe. We are a Java shop. We do a lot of things with Java, but we also enjoy a lot of things doing uh, with Groovy. And uh, we, we do Griffon, we do Grails, we do Gradle, and a Spark, and Jeff, and uh, Lazy Bones, and uh, well, there are many things out there that you see in the Groovy ecosystem, and we pretty much make use of them uh, all the time in our projects. So, uh, so people that know me know that I've been working with Griffon for, well, pretty much since the beginning. Uh, Griffon is a framework that is quite mature. It's eight years old. And it's based, or originally was based, in the Grails 1.1 code base. So it's kind of like a fork of Grails, and then move on into its own life. And uh, it's, well, now it's catering specifically to writing desktop applications. So does anybody here still write a desktop application? Yeah, OK, just one hand. <laughs> and uh, I guess some of you still have the mental scars of writing a Swing application in the past. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. And one of the problems was that there was no same framework to do things, right? In the early days of the web frameworks, you might remember Struts. Yes, everybody remembers. So Struts was king, and the, what did we had in the desktop environment? Nothing. And then came out the Spring MVC, and Trails, and Sales, and Rails, and Grails, and whatever else. What would be happen in the desktop? Nothing. Until Griffon came out. So. Uh, we, we created this framework, Griffon. We enjoyed a, a lot of popularity with the desktop crowd. And uh, we pretty much copied the Grails framework. And we added our own flavor on top of it. So I'm happy to say that Alvaro made a good uh, presentation on what is new in Grails 3. And what is new in Grails 3 is all news in, Grails, in Griffon 1, because we did it first. We had <laughs> binary plugins first. We had profiles first, we called it archetypes. And we had a much better plugin system. I'm sorry to say it, but that is the truth. And we listened to our people. We listened to what they wanted. And what they said to us is that you need more cowbell. We need something more. So we ended up releasing uh, Griffon 2 last year. And what Griffon 2 is, is a re-implementation of the framework in such a way that it takes out the uh, legacy um, build tool that we had before based on Gantt, which is what the same thing that Grails 2 had. Now, they switched to Gradle and in Grails 3. Can you figure out what Griffon did before? Yes, we switched to Gradle before. So uh, you install Griffon now. Uh, well, actually, you don't install Griffon. Griffon is just a set of Java jars or, or libraries, and you just use it as it. So in order to get it started, I would definitely recommend you to have a look at SDK Man, previously known as GVM, the Groovy Environment Manager. This is the easiest way for you to get installed uh, Gradle and Groovy and Grails, and yes, Maven and Ant and Scala and Zalon and Kotlin. But anyway, the important thing is that you can install Gradle very easily with this tool and you get your versions up to date. The next thing you need to install or at least we recommend you to get started because this is how we deliver the ability to create projects very easily, is Lazy Bones. So Lazy Bones is kind of the answer to Gradle not having the equivalent to Maven archetypes. And Lazy Bones was started by Peter Ledbrook uh, because Ratpack, thanks to a great presentation by Marcin about Ratpack, will never provide archetypes or profiles because here we are, Lazy Bones. Now, the next thing, of course, that I already mentioned is Gradle. But if you really need to work with Maven, don't worry. We also support Maven because we no longer, again, have a custom uh, build tool. We no longer have the need for a Gryphon command like Grails had in the past. Now, we also make extensive use of this framework, Spark. To the right, you see the official uh, logo to the left. <coughs> is the logo that we prefer, but I don't think that for some legal issues we can actually make use of that one. Uh, that's a fun one. 
Uh, we also cater to uh, different UI toolkits, for example, Swing and JavaFX, Pivot, Lanterna. And uh, in the case of JavaFX, there's a really nice DSL that allows you to write applications very quickly, very easily. That is called GroovyFX. So what you are looking at right now is that Gryphon actually makes use of a lot of projects coming from the Groovy ecosystem, not just inside its own build system, but also for developers that create um, applications. We also make use of these little two guys called Gypsy and Gypsy. Uh, or my, my native language is Spanish, so for me they actually sound exactly the same. I know that people from Britain will pronounce it completely different. Uh, so one of them gives you access to the annotation processing tool in Java, that's what it has a J, and the other is, is, does the same thing but in Groovy using AST transformation. This allows you to write files during compile time that get, uh, get generated, generate additional metadata. For example, the meta in services files that we always have to update by hand. Well, this thing will do it automatically for you just during the compilation phase. And in Gryphon, we make extensive use of these metadata files to keep things uh, nice and tidy so you don't have to do duplicate stuff. And finally, we embrace ASCII doc as our documentation format of choice. And we use JBake to build the static content of our website and plugins and whatnot. So it all comes around again to many things that exist in the Groovy ecosystem. We're making extensive use of them inside the Gryphon build and the Gryphon projects. So let me show you quickly what Gryphon can do for you. So let's go into the example. And right here, I'm going to create a new application, say, um, Lazy Bones. Uh, probably make it a little bigger. Lazy Bones, create, and you have to have a series of templates already configured. Uh, so perhaps I should show that first. Lazy Bones list. This will uh, show me the list of all available templates that I have. So these, the ones that you see here are the standard Lazy Bones templates from the main repository. But I also have some additional ones for creating a Gryphon application, I will say something about Basilisk in just a moment. So we're going to pick this one, the JFX uh, Groovy template, because we're in a Groovy conference. So, Lazy Bones, uh, Bones, create uh, Gryphon uh, JFX. I'm going to make it JFX. Let's keep it clean. And uh, this will be the Great Day application. And like, if you haven't seen Lazy Bones before, this works exactly like Maven Archetype, so much better. They will ask you a couple of questions of what you want to do, the coordinates of your project. Uh, well, yeah, Artifact ID, I'll keep that one. That's kind of a, a wonky problem with uh, Lazy Bones detecting the, um, the boundaries of a word when a number is in between. Yeah, it's a known issue. Anyway, let's keep that. Let's, uh, let's go with the defaults. And right now, I can simply call Gradle, clean, and run it. And it will just work. It's a tiny little application that does nothing other than clicking on a button and updating that particular label right there. Yeah, at least it proves that this thing is working. So out of the bat, you get a working application and it's up to you to start adding more things. Just like in Grails, Gryphon has a standard structure of the applications, um, which you can find if you do, uh, let's see, a tree on the Gryphon app. And then we see that there is a controller, there is a model, and there is also a view. We support testing, we support uh, dependency injection, resources. There are many things that you get out of the box just by using this framework. Uh, at, at the very least, you get a very well set of organized um, artifacts and models and controls and whatnot. Now, what is great about Lazy Bones that uh, Maven archetypes do not allow you to do is once you have bootstrapped a project, the Maven archetype is gone, right? There is no relationship. Uh, so what if you want to create new controllers or new artifacts? We know this is possible to do with Grails because we have a, a, a command line tool that allows us to do this. Well, because Gryphon does no longer have its own command line for this, we still rely on Lazy Bones, and it has another feature called uh, sub-templates. So you can generate new artifacts with this thing. So I now can say Lazy Bones generate is a different command, and uh, given an artifact, 
and I'll let it ask me some questions. So which kind of artifact? I want to create a service. So I specify the service template. Now it asks me for a package. It remembers the package that I gave it before. I'm going to take that one. And now I'm going to give it another name. This will be, I don't know, custom server or whatever it is. Now it has created two artifacts, the service itself and a test. And if I look into the code, right there, there's my standard structure similar to the one found in Grails, and there's my service. Remember when I say something about Gypsy? There's an annotation artifact provider for. When we do Gradle, let's generate the jar for this thing. This will create some metadata files inside the generated classes. In this case, it will be Griffon. And there is this Griffon service. And there is the name of the class. So the only thing that I can do now is if I want to rename this thing and then just recompile, then that file will be automatically regenerated and have the right information. And this works pretty much for every Griffon artifact because this is required by the Griffon runtime in order to find everything that it needs to do to put things together so that you can be happy developing applications. So as you see, it's very easy to get started, but there are a few more things that you can do. For example, here's another uh, application that makes use of additional settings. In this case, it's using a project called Bootstrap FX, which tries to give you uh, Bootstrap CSS for JavaFX, because if you didn't know, JavaFX supports CSS 2.1. Not the full standard, though. So there are a few things that we need to do. We make use of the uh, Gradle Compass plugin in order to transform the original Bootstrap SAS sources into CSS that can work in, in uh, JavaFX. So again, another interaction with the Groovy ecosystem. So this project actually uh, is very simple to do. And uh, we, we can try some hints here. Yeah, higher, I suppose. And then, I suppose, lower, and eventually start over. Anyway. Uh, this application is exactly like the previous one in the case of it has its own structure where you see there is eventually a controller and there will be a model and there will be a view. And if you have uh, noticed that everything now is written in Java instead of being written in Groovy. This is another great change that we did in Gryphon 2 is that uh, we made sure that the kernel was written in Java. We took this inspiration from Ratpack because the kernel of Ratpack is mostly written in Java and this has a nice code in a nice DSL and extensions written in Groovy. So whether you like to write in Java or like to write in Groovy, the framework will work. If you happen to write in Java, then that means your applications are going to be a small interest in case of memory footprint. And why would you care about memory footprint? Because if it's written in Java and it's small enough, then it can fit into a Raspberry Pi or a much smaller computing device. Whereas, whereas if it's written in Groovy, of course, the size is going to be a bit bigger, but also the computing power will be uh, it's a little bit more expensive because Groovy has the dynamic uh, dispatch uh, method invocation, which in some cases, so in this kind of computers, the ones that you have, it's no problem, but in the smaller devices, uh, we can get a little bit in trouble. So we decided to let go of that and make sure that if you are capable of running, well-behaved, a smaller application on these devices, then let's do this. And uh, to put, uh, put some kind of relationship to what Marcin just showed us in Radpack and testing, here's another example that I have for you. This is an application that actually was written four times over to showcase that the framework can adapt itself to a particular MVC pattern of your choice. So even though Griffon says, would you have models, views, and controllers that kind of forces you to use the MVC pattern? Well, there are other variations such as model view presenter, model view view model, and the one that is my favorite, the presentation model uh, view controller. So regardless of that, you can test most of these applications in the same way. So if I run this, I can run unit test, I can run integration test, and I really love this feature from Gradle, just to specify the smallest set of characters and invoke the right test, and functional testing. So you will see first unit test, then integration test, and when the functional tests kick in, you will see something interesting. So there we go, unit test. Fine. Integration test, fine. And then come the functional test. 
Whoa. Did you know you could do that? Huh? So, uh, unit testing, you do it very easily just, when in this case it's Java, use, use whatever you want. As a matter of fact, it will be better if this were using a Spark because it's a, a, a Groovy conference. Uh, similar to what uh, Masin showed you in Radpack, uh, you, we have something in, based on JUnit rules that allows you to bootstrap an application that's quite uh, good enough for you. It's not, the, it's not the default JavaFX application, it's kind of like a non-UI based application that can construct all the collaborators that it needs and you can override collaborators using just plain mocks. So if I'm not mistaken, it's kind of similar to what Marcin so, showed us uh, with the, um, what is, what's the name of this? In positions, exactly. We're not imposing here, we are mocking things here. But it's kind of like the same idea. So uh, there is a mocking there. We're mocking a service. It's a little bit convoluted in this case because it has to be as lazy as possible. But there are other ways to make this as very, very simple. So this is just unit testing. But integration testing, we got, an, here's the rule. But what happens here, instead of instantiating an, uh, an artifact, we instantiated an MVC group which controls models, view, and controller. The thing that we're mocking here is the view because we don't care about the UI here. And the final piece is the functional testing. This makes use of another project called TestFX. And what you write here looks like Jeff, but it doesn't have a nice DSL. So it would be a, a, a good thing if somebody will come up with a nice DSL on top of TestFX so that we can write much better uh, Groovy-based uh, tests for this thing. So, um, again, uh, I think this, this is pretty much it. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the example. So, these are, I would say, the core features of the framework. Uh, the fact that we should have a common application life cycle, so an application will go through at least these phases, initialize where it loads the configuration or initializes the conf uh, dependency injection container. In this case, we are relying by default on juice. This is another idea that we took from Radpack, but we have extracted this uh, dependency injection mechanism so they could hook in something else like a spring or weld or a square one, if that, that is possible. Then we also have localized resources. So the names of the buttons that you saw there, we can change them actually. And we can change them not just by defining, uh, by, by changing the code itself. We have information about those actions externalized. So you can define an icon or the text or the tooltip. Everything that you want related to that action can be changed. If I'm not mistaken, I can do that here. Uh, let's go back to the number guess <coughs> application. Let's go into internationalization. Yeah. And let's change the name of this button, the reset, to be Great Day Vasov. Now we just run the application once more. And there you get it. So now code changes. And it's fully internationalizable. So if I run the application in English, it might use the default net text. But if I run it in Polish, then it will pr uh, present the right text in Polish or Spanish or something else without any code changes. You can change colors, icons, tooltips, everything, right? So that's one of the features that we found there. Um, the configuration, uh, we have externalized ways for configuring. You can configure everything using Java resource bundles or Groovy resource bundles or property bundles, JSON, JAML, you name it. It's up to you to decide how you want to externalize your configuration. Uh, MVC artifacts, I show you, you have model views and controllers. You can extend this. You can have presenters if you like them instead of not controllers or adapters or services or something else. Just like in Grails, we used to have the capability to have more artifacts like uh, routes or jobs if you're using the Quartz plugin, pretty much the same thing. Uh, we got this loosely coupled action. So there's actually an, an entity, if you will, that defines what an action is. And we can change any kind of properties that we want. And if you happen to run in JavaFX, changing those properties will take care inside the proper EUI thread. So you don't have to be 
much concern. You still have to know the, that you are dealing with different threads in the UI, but you don't have to concern yourself too much in wrapping code so that it runs in one thread or the other. Griffon will most of the times will do the right thing for you using sensible defaults. Uh, we use dependency injection. We also have a very lightweight event bus that allows you to post events inside or outside UI thread, either asynchronous or synchronous, so very easy to communicate different components that don't not, do not know each other, but they need to send information to one another. We have the capabilities of a centralized error management. This is a feature that I used to use in a previous job where the typical use case was this. You're developing the application, and while you're in development, you launch it, you test it manually, boom, an exception happens, some error. So a dialog pops in. It gives you the capabilities to uh, fill out the list, uh, a list of steps to reproduce the problem. You click Submit, and the stack trace and all that information plus some metadata gets sent into an issue tracker. Now, this is possible because of the centralized error manager was able to uh, uh, react to these particular things. But you don't want this dialogue to be sent to the customer once you ship it for production. So we also rely on this feature on Grails that has multiple environment support. So now with the centralized error management and multiple environment support, you can display a different dialog in production that says probably, oh, an unexpected error happened. Uh, do you want to save your changes because I'm about to crash? And finally, we cannot think of every single thing that you would like to do in an application. So we have uh, the possibility to extend the framework using plugins. We like to call them add-ons. And I have already shown a little bit of them. Uh, we got uh, add-ons for persistence. We don't yet support GORM, uh, but we can, uh, you can talk to databases either using Hibernate 3 or 4 or 5 because the three of them are completely incompatible with one another. Or you can use JPA, EVIN, plain data uh, G Groovy SQL or something else. Or if you want additional widgets, there are plugins for all that kind of stuff. The framework they has this new website, this shiny website is written in JBake and ASCII.org. The website is griffon-framework.org. And uh, I didn't take the full screenshot, but here you get the quick stuff. How to get started, just what I did uh, uh, a few minutes ago. There's just like a half page going down, and that's as easy as you can do in order to get started with the framework. There is another thing. When I mentioned that we want to be sure that you can write applications as small as possible with the smallest uh, memory footprint, even if you do make use of Gryphon to write a small application, it's likely that it won't run on a mobile device such as an Android device or an iOS. This is due to the fact that Android has restrictions on the API. You cannot use uh, the Java Beans package. You cannot have certain classes because they are whitelisted. So what do we do? Do we go back to the uh, area of caveman and try to bang things together so that it works on Android or on iOS? Of course not. What we do is we fork Gryphon and we create a new framework called Basilisk. <laughs> and Basilisk is pretty much the same code base as Gryphon, the latest one, but with some changes. Pers um, specifically, we remove everything that was deprecated in Gryphon. We uh, make sure that everything runs in Java 8. It's JavaFX only. It doesn't work with Swing. It's Java only. That's for a reason. And it doesn't use the Java Beans package. It uses the uh, Open Beans package, which is coming from Apache Harmony, which is exactly the same classes, but with a different package name. <laughs> really? I mean, I don't know what's going on with Android. Why cannot they allow this? Is, if they can do it with Android, anyway. Hopefully this thing will change now that Android is going to make use of Arc Open um, JDK in the future. And because they're going to make use of Open JDK in the future, it's likely that if any of you are writing Android applications, you know you still have to be constrained with uh, Java 6. Then later you can actually make use of Java 8 features. Yay, Lambdas! So uh, with Basilisk, you can create an application very easily. Actually, it works exactly the same. Um, you go to um, here, let's make it bigger. Now let's go back and do um, lazy bones create basilisk 
Uh, this will be uh, JavaFX iOS template, I believe. Uh, let's call it uh, sample. Hopefully, I don't have any sample lying around. Uh, it's downloaded for the network. Okay, so let's go with all the defaults. Perfect. Let's launch sample, and this will be a Gradle run. And this will launch the application. Uh, ooh. Oh. Nice. There is a problem in the JFX uh, plugin. Yes, just upgrade the plugin to the latest version, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. That wasn't the case? Uh, I thought that the JFX mobile plugin was, that was the latest version. Uh, anyway, I do have an example that works. Yes, I always prepare. Uh, so TMP, no, that's, uh, that will be Basilisk. And here we got the number gates demo. Uh, let's run it with uh, Grail wrapper. Anyone of you know about GDOB? You don't know what GDOB is? GDOB is the best thing that you can use paired with Gradle. It's an, uh, a script that allows you to run Gradle anywhere in your project. So this is what I'm going to use. Uh, so I'm going to clean and run it. And yeah, that runs whatever version of Gradle I have for that project. The error wrapper is probably one of the best additions that we have had to the, uh, the Gradle build system. So great that Mabel is even copying that one for them, plus the Gradle daemon also. There's going to be a Mabel daemon. Anyway, oh, 107, that was the latest one. Uh, so it's going, this is going to download the, the, uh, the plugin. Sorry, I, I didn't test this one earlier. And this will launch the application. And if instead of just doing run, I say Gradle launch iPhone simulator or iOS simulator, then because I'm running on Mac and I have Xcode, then we will make sure that the application will run on the iPhone simulator. It's just exactly the same code base, no changes needed whatsoever. The next thing that you need to do is just package it, ship it, boom, you can make tons of money in the Apple store. Um, this is going to uh, take a long, yeah, there it is. Finally, woo, this is Basilisk. And you can tell because it has a Basilisk app directory on it. Right. Makes sense. Yes, exactly. And the, and the, and the, um, the artifacts look exactly the same. For example, there is a controller, right? There's a test controller, Java class there. And the only change I need to do instead of standing from an abstract Gryphon controller, just to stand abstract Basilisk controller. And the code base is exactly the same. Okay. So, uh, we're almost done with the time. So, I would like to um, thank you for your time, for being here, for being awesome, for liking Groovy. Uh, we are looking forward to making more great things with the Gryphon framework. And one of the things that we really like to do is make sure that we contribute back to the Groovy ecosystem. We have developed a couple of Gradle plugins that make uh, life a little bit easier. Uh, you might remember the stats uh, feature from Grails, right? That gives you the capabilities of counting how many lines of code per artifact. Well, there is a plugin called Stats that will give you that. And it works with Basilisk and Gryphon and any Java project because this layout, or any Groovy project for that matter, this layout is configurable. So what we took was the behavior of the Gryphon build tool, exported as a regular Gradle plugin, and now every Gradle project can benefit from this. And a few other things like that also happen. So with that, uh, so thank you very much for, for listening. I hope that I have given you a few hints on how Gryphon can do the work for you. If you need to create a desktop applications or a mobile application, please give Gryphon and Basilisk a try. We welcome all feedback, whether it's positive or negative. We just want to make this thing better and work for you guys because we do this work so that you and myself inside work and my job, we can create this kind of applications. So 